Right. Hopefully, it'll be great. It will be great. Because I'm talking about some great stuff. Because I'm continuing, move over a bit, uh, continuing the series on uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, which I'm sure for many of you as well is, uh, is maybe your favorite uh, gospel. I don't, oh, there he is. Looks a good looking guy over there. Um, uh, but before I do, I just want to um, tell you one thing about why we're looking at John. Why are we looking at John? And there's no secret about it. In fact, John actually explains what he's trying to do uh, in his message, in his book of John. And he says it almost to the end, just before the last chapter. And if you put the next slide up, please, um, George, you'll be able to see. I'll move away from it so you can see. It says there in John 20, 31, purpose of this book makes it really plain. So that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that by believing you may have life in his name. How many are you feeling lively this morning? I don't know whether you are at all. But, but that's the purpose of the book of John, so that you can have life in, in his name and know that he's the Messiah. And I just hope, my, my real hope and prayer this morning is just by going through um, the couple of verses that I'm going to be looking at today, that some of that is truth for you, that maybe we'll all just become a little bit closer to having life in that name of Jesus. So without further ado... Uh, I'm going to ask George to put up the first part of the, the verse, and I'll, I'll read it out, because I'm going to be reading um, from John 2, 13 to 22, following on from um, the word that Steve so ably shared with us uh, last week when he was uh, sharing the story of turning the, the water into wine. And it starts like this. It was almost time for Passover festival, so Jesus went to the temple, went to Jerusalem, sorry. There in the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip from cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both sheep and the cattle. He overturned the temples of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who sold the pigeons, take them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His, scriptures, his disciples remembered that the scripture says, my devotion to your house, O God, burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question, what miracle can you perform to show us you have the right to do this? Jesus answered, answered, tear down this temple and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days, they asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So when he was raised from the death, from death, his disciples remembered that it, what he had said, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. Wow, great, uh, great words. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. See, the religious people of the day didn't get it. They didn't understand that he was talking about the temple of his body because they were about the business as usual. And as you noticed before, my title, the start, is interrupting business as usual because that's certainly what Jesus did. It was business as usual that day. Jesus showed up at the temple. Animals were being bought and sold. Coins were being changed. All the usual people had their usual roles. This is one of the stories that we need to set aside a couple of things that don't belong, things that distract before we can really understand what is happening. We need to cast aside what has often been told or thought about this story. It's about uh, uh, we can hear it again, maybe for the first time. There's lots of things you can say. A while ago, I, I talked about how maybe our picture of Jesus sometimes got distorted and showed you some, some paintings and some pictures of Jesus that have been around for many years and basically looks like your mum with a beard. 
okay? It's very feminine with glowing, wonderful golden locks and beautiful white skirt, all the rest of it. But that's not what he would have looked like. And I'd love to go on and talk about the whole idea of uh, what he was doing in the temple there with, uh, with a whip. He wasn't country dancing. He didn't scare him off with that. Uh, but that's not the purpose of uh, the, the talk this morning. Because I don't think this story is simply about Jesus getting angry. Jesus got angry. I get angry. Sometimes I shouldn't, but sometimes maybe I should. Because sometimes it is okay to get angry. But that misses the point. There's more to this story than that. And I don't think it's about the animals or the money changers being in the temple. Jesus surely had, had to have known that they were there. He grew up as a faithful Jew going to the temple. He didn't show up this day and said, Wow, there are anim animals and money changers here. I didn't know this. This is wrong. The animals and the money changers have always been there. That's how the system worked. It was business as usual for them to be there. I think Jesus went to the temple that day for one purpose to throw out and overturn business as usual. There are times, folks, when we need the tables of our lives turning upside down and maybe some of the animals thrown out. It's just so easy for each one of us to fall into the trap of business as usual. Can you show the next slide, please? And the next Have you ever pushed the autopilot button in life and become mechanical? You know I have. You go through the motions, you show up, but you're not really there. That's business as usual. How about this? Have you ever smiled that, I'm good and everything is fine smile, but behind the smile, there was an emptiness. You felt hollow and your heart was maybe breaking. That's carrying on with business as usual. Or maybe you wake up in the morning and you are as exhausted as you were when you went to bed the night before. Business as usual. Have you ever felt like you were just not yourself? Nothing seemed right. Boredom overcame creativity. There was no enthusiasm, wonder or imagination. It was just business as usual. Sometimes we look at life and the world and it all seems in vain. We're busy, but we're not getting anywhere. There's no depth or meaning, only business as usual. Business as usual can happen anywhere, in friendships, in marriages, parenting, work, church. The thing I just described are not, however, the problem. They're the symptom. In the same way that the animals and money changes in the temple are not the problem. They're the symptoms of something deeper going on. The problem is not so much in the temple as in the human heart. The deeper issue is, I think, what gives rise to the business as usual. Sometimes it's about fear. We're fearful about what is happening in our life or the uncertainty of the future and we want some type of security and predictability so we keep on doing the same old thing. We're fearful of change. Business as usual is predictable and steady but it creates only the illusion of security. Change happens whether we like it or not. Sometimes business as usual is a symptom of grief and sorrow. Something has been lost. We can't get back the life we want, so we cling to business as usual because it's familiar and we want some stability. Other times we're, we're so busy and worn out making a living that that life turns into one task after another, one appointment after another, a never-ending list of to do and it's business as usual. Maybe we've taken people, relationship and things for granted. Maybe we've lost our sense of gratitude, wonder or mystery. I don't know if you remember uh, 
the first lockdown, I'm not going to talk about the second and third lockdown, but that first lockdown, and maybe you weren't this person, I was, I thought it was great. You know, when everything was locked down, we just had that for that first couple of weeks. And I remember the YouTube clips, uh, we're never going to go back to how we were before. You know, it, mm, that didn't last very long, did it? I do not say any of this is criticism of judgment of you, me, or anyone else. I'm just naming what often happens to us. What has business as usual looked like in your life? In what ways is business as usual for you today? There are thousands of reasons and ways in which we fall into business as usual. There's one thing, however, that I keep coming back to, and that's forgetfulness. See, business as usual, I believe, is born primarily out of forgetfulness. We forget that we really are the temple of God's presence. We forget that all creation is the residence of God. We forget that in whatever direction we might turn, there is a face of God gazing upon us. And as soon as we forget those things about ourselves, about each other, or the world, life becomes just business as usual. I think that's what's happened in the temple. They didn't see themselves or one another as the true temples of God. It was all about human-built temples, the animals and the coins. They'd forgotten that God was more interested in them than in their festivals and that God wanted them more than their offerings. When we forget that we are the temple of God, life can become a series of transactions, relationship and intimacy lost. Priorities get rearranged, making a living replaces living a life. Life becomes a marketplace rather than a place to meet the holy in ourselves and in one another. And it's business as usual. Next slide, please. That's what God is overturning and driving out of the temple. In the gospel, according to St. John, this happened at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. The word became flesh. That's what we heard a few weeks ago, wasn't it? Water last week became wine, as Jesus, as, uh, not Jesus, Steve. <laughs> as Steve shared his message with her. Both had beards. <laughs> and now the temple is becoming human. And it doesn't stop there. Throughout the rest of John's gospel, Jesus will be interrupting business as usual. Some of you know the, the story of the Samaritan woman at the well that... Um, Rachel will be talking about next week. She had five husbands and she's living with a man who is not her has husband. Despite what we have uh, done to her, that's not a statement about her. It's another manifestation of business as usual. Her first husband died, divorced her or ran away. Who knows? Jesus recognizes her as the temple of God. It's neither on this, the Samaritan mountain, nor in Jerusalem. She is now the well of living water. How about the man that spent 38 years on a mat in John 5, 1 to 9? He was paralyzed and always trying to get into the, the pool of water that would heal him. But someone always got there first. The same ground, the same mat, the same paralyzed legs, the same failed effort. It was 38 years of business as usual. Then Jesus comes and says, stand up, take your mat, mat and walk. And the man did. He rose up to a new life and business as usual had been interrupted. I might say that, yeah, that's obvious. You know, he was paralyzed and he could walk. So that's a big change with him. And God could have done that to, to many of the other paralyzed people there. And there's many paralyzed people at that time. And he didn't heal every single one of them. And so there had to be some other reason why this was written down. And I feel, again, it was a challenge about this business as usual that can happen to all of us. We can all be paralyzed in different ways, can't we? And let's not forget the 5,000 people that showed up empty and hungry. 
Philip is sure there's not enough to feed them. There's no way to feed them. Empty and hungry people are business as usual. But Jesus has other plans. Two fishes and five loaves are more than enough. Everyone was satisfied. Twelve baskets were filled with leftovers. It wasn't business as usual for the empty and hungry that day. Over and over again, Jesus is interrupting, disrupting and overturning and throwing out business as usual. Business as usual is destructive of our lives and relationships. It destroys our ability to see and participate in the holy that is already present in and amongst us. The word became flesh so that the temple might become human. Jesus continues to overturn and throw out business as usual because the truth is there are still Samaritan women waiting at the well in our world today. There are still lame people grounded by business as usual. Empty and hungry people are still a reality in our world And there are dead people waiting to be made alive. Maybe for you today, there isn't, this isn't about other people. Maybe you are the woman at the well. Maybe you know what it's like to be grounded and paralyzed. Maybe you are empty and hungry today. Maybe you need to be called to life. Maybe business as usual needs to be interrupted in your life. As you know, um, last week, uh, my other daughter came up. So most of you know, I think Rachel uh, is my daughter, but uh, two daughters, Megan is my other daughter. And she came up last week. And if you just show the next picture. And uh, she met up with her friend, Lori. uh, And she shared, I'll get out of the way. She shared uh, on the family WhatsApp picture, a picture she dug out from Maithrin and then a picture last week of the two of them. And there they are. Oh, my goodness. What a cute kid she was. Uh, And there they are, young women uh, today with their babies because they they gave birth within about a week of each other with their first babies. So they posted that picture again. And I'm, this is where I'm getting old. I'm getting old now. Because I see, I see Megan there. And I often have flashbacks to that little girl with a fringe that I cut for her. Uh, <laughs> and she doesn't let me now, needless to say. And uh, I think, wow, where did that time go? Where did that time just disappear? That's when you can tell you're getting old, isn't it? When uh, you start saying, saying that. And the reason for putting up... It, well, I like the picture, that's why I put it up. But uh, the reason for putting it up is just say, look, life goes really quick. Life goes without you realising it. And if your life is just business as usual, it'll go. And you'll suddenly maybe have a look back and think, what happened there to my life? See, regardless of who you are or what you've done or left undone or how we see or judge our life, We are the temple of God and there is one who stands in the temple of our life interrupting business as usual. Not to cause us hassles for the sake of it, but to to give you real life. Let's go back to, there we are, he's done it. Oh, well done, George, you're on it. Um, Just wanted to share this with you. Uh, It's from Corinthians 119. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and has given and was given to you by God? Do you not belong to yourself? You, sorry, you do not belong to yourselves, but to God. Now, why did Paul write that? He wrote that because he knew he'd forget. He knew we'd forget that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We knew that we are prone to business as usual and frittering away. Uh, our lives with that so I want to end really there with that that message but I want to to challenge you uh, with some questions and I want to challenge me with these questions as, as well what does the temple of your life 
need today to stop being just business as usual? What tables in your life need to be overturned? What habits, what actions, what thoughts? What animals need to be driven out? Now I'm going to let that one uh, sink into all of us as, as we drift uh, maybe to thinking about Sunday dinner or something like that, I don't know. Try and focus on, on those questions and ask God to highlight what does the temple of your life uh, need today? What temples in your life need to be overturned? What animals need to be driven out? Have we got it? No, we haven't. Uh, so I'm going to ask our wonderful worship leaders to, to just play as uh, a song for us while we're just contemplating that. And if any of you are, are touched and want prayer for any of those things, maybe those animals that need driving out of your life have been there for a long time. Maybe you've asked over and over again for those animals to, to be driven out and they're still there in your life. If you want prayer for that, then ask. And um, there's many people around here who will pray with you. If you've identified maybe tables in your life that need overturning, then ask for prayer. God can help. Because God is the God of interrupting business as usual to give life in all its fullness.